So this is the mold after it's obviously been removed from the master. But I wanted to show you um, one of the key concepts that I wanted to integrate into this mold, which dictated where the parting lines of the mold were going to be because they have to match the <laughs> They have to match the mother mold. There's a lot of molds going on here. So <clears throat> the reason that I needed them to line up is that I've had trouble in the past getting the molds to hold their shape when you put it into the mother mold for support. Because even if I had this as a shell, right, this could crumple in away from the outside edge of the of the, the mother mold. So this time I decided that I would create basically a tongue and groove system so that I built this out and then I created flanges so that when the mother mold closes it closes on those flanges which will um, then be a great pinch for the seams hold those tight and then the mold can't slump away from the wall of the mother mold so I put those in <coughs> Excuse me. So I put those in on the uh, three sides, all right? And so these became the, the parting lines. And the other thing I did before I built the, uh, the mother mold was to um, cut. Actually, you can probably see them like this. So I cut in um, slots into the rubber before applying the, the fiberglass uh, for the mother mold. Instead of in the past, what I've done is I've created a little, you know, rivet bump with the rubber that would then kind of sit in. Instead now these, I probably should show you now, these fit over pegs so that it clips into the mother mold and that works much, much better. Now, getting this all back in there, I'll tell you what. I'll be back in two seconds. So I haven't put it all the way in because I, there's two reasons. One is I wouldn't be able to show you the inside. And two, in order to insert the mold, because, let's do it like this. Because you should be able to see this, there's this groove right to receive the, the tongue, so to speak, the tongue and groove system. I can't just press it in. I have to leave the seam loose, push it into that groove, then screw down all of the uh, retaining screws to close that in on this. So it takes a second to line everything up and then attach it all. But you can also see um, how the uh, peg system works. Here's, a, here's one, right? So once this is in tight, the mold snaps over these spots. And I found that that really helps to um, hold them in place quite well. Um, I should have been a little more careful with some of them to get a good fill when I was making the mother mold. Uh, but for the most part, they filled pretty well and it worked all right. <coughs> Actually, you know what? I'm just going to do it like this. So, several new things with this um, entire mold process. The tongue and groove, the um, retaining sort of pegs in the mother mold, and um, the, uh, <laughs> this is not a shocker, but it, it, it was a lot easier. I didn't think about it. Um, using screws to hold the pieces together. Typically, um, what's shown is to um, drill holes, and that's why you need the flange, and then um, throw a bolt through it, and then um, put a, a nut on the other side, right, and crank it down. I didn't have any bolts. <laughs> so I was like, oh no, I'm gonna have to use screws, I hope. And um, it actually worked out really well. Uh, the nice thing about it is I don't have to fiddle with something. I can just get my drill out and just zip, 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 put them all through. Warning, though, is that um, you really need to drill out the hole to fit the screw really closely, um, like big enough that it just 
barely bites into the plastic because it is brittle and I did have a few spots crack when I was um, driving the uh, screws through it for the first time. So I actually went back and added a few extras um, just to make sure there wasn't any problems with that. So way, way, way easier than um, using bolts, my opinion. Now, one more thought on the mother mold here and what happened. <laughs> All right. So um, for those of you who may be not entirely familiar, um, right, so you have your mold over the master, then we're going to paint plastic over it. In this case, plastic you could use as I did before, right? You could also use um, plaster, uh, but if for something this big and heavy, um, and I'm going to hand roto cast it. I'll explain that in a second. Um, I wanted, I like, I like something a little more durable. So I used plastic paste and you can see the plastic paste, um, exposed down here. This is a, uh, basically a fiberglass compound that uh, smooth on makes is a two part compound, like a fiberglass epoxy, mix it up, trowel it on the big problem with, uh, Plastic paste is that it has um, a very, very short working time if you are mixing large amounts. And by large amount, I mean like a cup. It's uh, extremely exothermic and it runs away temperature wise very, very quickly. So for this, what I was doing is mixing small amounts and then troweling it all over, then go back, mix a small amount and do it again. That was working. <laughs> that was working. Pay attention. And then at some point, and I, I tried to remember when it happened and I can't remember exactly. I mixed the plastic paste wrong. I got my ratios mix, mixed up and I wasn't, I didn't notice. And so I applied a whole bunch, started to set, but it wouldn't fully harden because it didn't have the right ratio. Luckily, I was able to pull it off. It basically just delaminated, pulled it off of the, the old layer of plastic paste, and then I could continue. However, I didn't have enough plastic paste to finish the project, and I almost would have made it if I hadn't made that mistake, but I did. So we move on. We see what can we do to fix it? Smoothcast 320, back to the rescue. This time, I mixed the urophil into the smoothcast, and troweled that on, well, troweled, I kind of slopped it around and I used that to bulk up um, areas that needed it. And so you can see here, um, this was actually a, a small test just to see if it would actually bond to the plastic paste because I was worried it might uh, just delaminate and um, actually it made a good bond with it. And so basically um, all of this mother mold is a thin layer of plastic paste inside and then outside covered with smooth cast because um, it needed to be thicker. And in fact, the main concerns that I had at, as I went to the end was um, having uh, these edges, these ridges be thick enough that when I drive screws through them, they're not going to fracture. They're going to be strong enough to hold um, while I'm jumping around with this thing. Oh, and I put in some um, keys into the, uh, uh, the seams. So there are areas where there are keys that are, you know, I didn't want to drill into. So that's why there's some spacing here because there are keys to help line that mother mold up um, the same way whenever you're making a two-part mold, right? You put a key in so that there's a, a system where, there we go, so it fits, right? So you know you have a good lock and that's what I have in here. All right, so then it becomes time to remove the mother mold and to um, remove the rubber from the master. As I mentioned, getting this mother mold off was more difficult than I've experienced in the past. Um, here's a photo of me starting to do it. What you don't see in that photo is the one last section that 
is just a little bit bigger. So you see how this section has just a little bit more than this one does. Normally, it takes a little bit of work to get the first section off. I went for the corner because it'd be the easiest. Then I started working on these two. This one just said, I'll come off. Usually once the second one comes off, third one just falls right off. It's very easy. However, I really had, I almost locked it to the, the mold. It's just enough around to make it incredibly difficult to remove this. And I'll show you a photo of me trying. And that photo is showing you about an hour's worth of work because I had so many wedges gently trying to lift it so that I don't fracture it. And look, it's incredibly strong, but <laughs> simple machines, the wedge, it's your friend, but it's also very powerful. And I had a lot of force trying to just lift, you know, just get under there and lift it. I got it. Now, of course, it goes on and off very easily, but it, that initial pull was incredibly difficult. And um, in hindsight, you know, probably would have even been better just to move this, you know, like 10 degrees this way. But to be safe, maybe making four lines, that would have been, instead of three, that probably would have been a better decision. Now, once that came off, it becomes time to demold the, <clears throat> uh, to remove the master from the mold. Uh, two things of note with that. One is that, well, I guess I might as well take a look here. I just want to show when you. When I removed the mold from the master, um, you can see inside here. Let me just uh, tip this here. You can see the color break. Hopefully that's going to show. I'll try and tweak the uh, lighting if I can to get that to show. There's a strong line right here where the, the, the old rubber I had to cut out and then the join to the old rubber. That line is solid. I was really pleased with how well those two sections recombined. However, there are sections in the mold where it, the um, uncured rubber went between layers, right? Because I coated the layers before I realized it. So there are actually inside sections of the mold, there are layers that are <laughs> holding in uncured rubber. So far, it's been okay. Uh, but that join between those two halves was really, really awesome because I was really, really worried about it. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that worked out pretty well is that the um, cheesecloth in the corner, right? You can see how rigid the rubber is in the corners and um, these walls, right? That's got a lot of uh, really stiffening reinforcement when you compare that to, say, the front of the mold where there was no cheesecloth. Oh, man, this is awkward. I'm trying to be a little quiet. <laughs> um, but, you know, right, you can see how easy that is compared to the individual flexing of the areas where the cheesecloth was laid in. So I was pleased with that. That seemed to work well. And then the only other concern was um, actually freeing the uh, rubber from the face of the rock cast itself. And that took some time. And what I ended up doing, so I have my cut line coming up. This is where I'm peeling it open from. But because of the texture, it's not, it's not always possible without damaging the mold to just peel it off in one direction because of the nooks and the crannies. 
Sometimes I want to lift it from this direction. Sometimes I want to lift it this way. Sometimes I want to come up like this. So some sacrifices have to be made in this instance uh, because of the, the way the mold is rather than say a flat sheet of latex. So what I opted to do is come up with the tongue and groove and then if needed, which I did, I then made an incision uh, coming out like this across the face so that it forms like a Y shape and then I could take that area and flip it over to help me get the top bit off because I would never get to it from the bottom. Um, and then using the, the tongue here, I can open it up, but it can't really get very good access here. So it all has to be done from these sections coming out. Again, another cut line might have been helpful, but then you also have another seam that you have to clean if it doesn't, um, you know, have a, a good tight seal and it's complexity for the, the mother mold. So it's a toss up. It's a toss up. This is the direction I went. One final note before we um, leave this and start talking about the casts is that there are two, two things that make um, opening up this mold difficult. One is the incredibly thick tongue and groove um, section, right? So this is an inch thick right in here of rubber. Just being able to get in there takes some time and doing it um, as a uh, solo cut, right? I don't have a person to hold it while I cut and then they hold it and I cut and they hold it and I cut. You can kind of get away with it with these flat sides, but for a surface like this where the texture is, you know, coming right up against the rocks and I want as smooth a cut line as I can get because it's going to join back up later much, much more easily than if it's all jagged and full of, you know, chopped out rubber and all of that. Now, because I'm doing it by myself, I needed um, basically another set of hands. And I'm um, talking to a friend of mine. He recommended that I look into um, surgical tools. He's used some in the past, like, um, you know, retractors and things. So I got... So I got a pair of retractors. So these are to open and spread tissue. <laughs> I can do surgery now. Um, but um, I picked these up uh, for, I forget, maybe $13 each. And I could push them into the cut as I was making it and open it and then have my hands free to go and make more cuts as I open it. And here's a photo of what that process looked like. So those um, made a huge difference and having them now going forward, I feel much more confident about um, using uh, one part molds, for instance, uh, to encapsulate an object and then be able to get in there with a good clean line to free it rather than taking the time to make two part molds, for instance. So there's a lot of uh, flexibility it provides when you're a single caster and you're not in a studio with other people who can assist you while you're doing those kinds of cuts and it just it just feels good to be like i'm doing surgery so now that i've got the mold out i've got the master out i can reassemble the shell i can lock in the tongue and grooves into the seams press it all in drill it all, you know, uh, put all the screws in nice and tight. It's solid. Then it's time to cast. 